good morning students good morning sir please type morning, your attendance sir. in the command window ah good morning please type your attendance in the command window okay now we will discuss and uh, we will start class on capacity assessment strengthening capacity for reducing risk already we are discussing fourth module of the subject disaster management and the previous class we have discussed capacity building and uh, non structural and structured measures of capacity building etc so now we are going to discuss its assessment term. that is we have already defined that in a flooded area or uh, some uh, water or flowing area we need to build capacity building by doing some structural measures or non structural measures in structural measures we will build a physical structure that includes uh, some river passages as well as providing barrier for uh, ocean attack like that we have producing some physical structures but in non structural studies we have done mock drills training and face to face training different such uh, features and build the people who are going to affect by the disaster these are the two kinds of capacity building now we need to assess what is the capacity whether our capacity build it is enough or we require anything more so that should be assessed and after that we need to strengthen the capacity if the assessed capacity is less then we need to strengthen the capacity for reducing the disaster risk hope you are understanding the terms so first the capacity assessment <coughs> as we have already told that capacity assessment is an important term and in capacity assessment it is the analysis of desired capacity against existing capacity it's an important term this is the definition of capacity assessment please note down a capacity assessment is an analysis of desired capacity against existing capacity if we have water flows in our area in our city and even though if a heavy water falls or rain falls exists and due to that the flood is coming means our capacity is not enough okay we need to enlarge that one in our classroom if we are uh, providing enough time that is if we are getting uh, time for disaster management subject as 2 uh, hours per week even though if we are doing in a such a way we won't get much time to overcome or complete the syllabus so that we are adding a remedial class for the respective subjects in other words when we are teaching you i am teaching you a subject disaster management and you are listening and going to write the examination when the examination over we will check the papers then only we will understand what is the capacity you have after the classroom after the teaching what the students learn is assessed by the mark list in the same way we need to assess the capacity on the basis of disaster 
I have set the example of classroom for you are reminding. Don't write that in your exam paper that classroom is a disaster. So, first of all, you must know capacity is a very important term while discussing disaster. In a very disaster, to mitigate or prevent the disaster, we need to build capacity. And uh, we need to assess whether the capacity build is enough for the protection of us. It is capacity assessment. So write the heading capacity assessment and write this term. That is a capacity assessment is an analysis of desired capacities against existing capacities. No need to write everything, but it is an important term. Capacity assessment that is capacity assessment is an analysis of desired capacities against existing capacities. Okay. And also, it generates an understanding of capacity assets and needs, which inform the formulation of a capacity development response. Normally, we will write capacity development as CD. You can write, uh, see that in the third point, that CD. Don't think it is a combat dish, it's capacity development. Only by assessing the capacity, we can understand whether the capacity is okay, fine, enough for protecting us from the disaster. And is there any need required? That should be assessed by the proper methods. Okay. Assessing institution and capacity is a central element of preparing and implementing any kind of support. It is also prerequisite for deciding if and how donor support to capacity development is feasible. That is, whenever we are thinking and assessing an institution, that is, disaster is planned accordingly, that's including training and encouragement. Uh, then uh, delivering knowledge to the public community, public awareness, warning system, everything includes in capacity. So here we are focusing on that particular point of capacity or institutional capacity and whether these are enough for protecting us. That is capacity assessment. That is if we are giving a warning in a floody area that we are going to shutter up or opening the shutter of a dam in a particular time and uh, that's uh, before a three hours earlier, that's not enough for the people to prepare for the thing. So we will give warning as such different colors. That is yellow alert, orange alert and red alert. When we are giving yellow alert after 24 hours, that we are having one day, full day in the dam shutter may be open. There is no, uh, we cannot predict that it will happen, but there is a warning that there is a chance of opening of dam. And after that, 12 hours later, they will give orange alert that there is a chance of opening again. You must be prepared. And after that, before one hour, early warning of, or uh, red warning will be given to the people to alert them that the shutter is going to open, that's mandatory, we are opening the shutter. That's a method. So, is it in a, fulfill the requirement of the vulnerable community is another question. If we are providing warning in a prayer manner, means the people cannot think or act accordingly. So, capacity should be assessed. So there are different uh, traditional instruments used for the development partners. Equipment, technical assistance, training, and knowledge transfer have had very mixed record of success. We cannot say we need to go in a such a way. We are using this equipment. We are giving warning alone. Means that will not be a good practice. We need to use our traditional practice. Means that is we are giving the warning to the people as well as we are going to that disaster affecting zone and informing them and helping them to shift their vulnerable properties and save lives of elderly people or disabled people, then only we can reduce the risk of disasters. So it's a mixed record of success. 
equipment, technical assistance, training, and knowledge transfer includes in this area. Sometimes instruments may have problem. That is, they may simply be wrong answer based on poor diagnosis and of needs and options. That is, if we are using a instrument that's a very old instrument, that may give a wrong answer. That is, when we are measuring the pressure of our surrounding using a barometer. If the barometer is not in a good condition, you know that barometer, right? So when we are using a barometer, which is not showing the exact result, that is pressure, then our result may affect. It's an important problem. Uh, we are uh, calculating our climate changes according to the pressure of our area. When we are looking in our measuring equipment and found that the measurement equipment is wrong, or make showing some difficulties, showing some errors, means our whole calculation planning will be affected by that. So we need to overcome that difficulty. For that, we need to change our equipment if the equipment is damaged. In some cases, the method of using that instrument may be the reason. The instrument may be very good condition, but the pupil, the person who is handling that instrument is not in a good way. That is, if uh, we are keeping a wet cloth over the temperature measuring instrument and uh, checking the temperature means we will get very low temperature because the top temperature will be transferred to the meter. So it's not a mistake of that instrument, but the mistake by the operator who is close that nib with the wet cloth. It's a mistake by the operator. That is, sometimes the problem is the way in which the instrument is used. First one is the instrument is used, uh, instrument having some problem. And second case, the way how we are using that instrument. There are two kind of mistakes. Okay. So whenever we are thinking about capacity development, when we are focusing on so good capacity development programs or capacity building, we need to be careful on both instruments. We need to calibrate the instrument according to the time consumptions. And uh, whenever we are getting time, we need to check whether the instrument showing the correct values. And second one is skilled operator should be used. The person who is having good knowledge with that instrument should be allocated for each process for the effective functioning of disaster risk reduction or capacity building. Okay, these are the two areas. You have to be very careful. Now, we will discuss why capacity is important. In the previous classes, we have said uh, capacity building, capacity building, need for capacity building. That is the reason why capacity is required. But when we are assessing that capacity, then only we can understand whether that capacity reduces risk of disaster. That's the only reason why we are assessing capacity. Whether our program, that is we are uh, giving a capacity assessment program and uh, where we have a capacity in our locality, flood area means we have river passages, water passages, and even though passages are there, when we are talking with other people that we have the passages for water, and there is no uh, such effect that disaster will happen here. And even the water passage is minimum number means we cannot say that that's a flood free area. So we need to be very careful that whether we are giving much importance for the physical structures. And also, we need to analyze whether we are training the pupil on the disaster affecting zone, or we are giving mock drills for them. If we are giving a mock drill only for one time, and pupil who are present there were unknown to the original situation, that is, uh, practicing situation, they may not be able to overcome that 
even though they are trained so experiencing the disaster condition that is that condition is very mandatory we are providing mock drill is very mandatory so we need to assess whether the training is enough or whether the mock drill is enough or whether the physical structure or structural measures taken are enough for the reduction and prevention of the disaster strategic and operational choices about overall focus area operational modalities and timing of aid are very important and also it's a very important term the second term that is weak capacity may imply that fewer fund can be effectively used and the more focus on capacity development is frequent if we are providing some passages physical structures for the flood overflow that water passage and we are not giving much focus on that area means we will not effectively utilize that money the government may pass the money as per the requirement of the planning and even though we are not uh, utilizing that effectively means the flood will be the as well as we have uh, wasted a lot of money so only by assessing the capacity we can utilize our fund effectively in our roads you can see that most of the roads are failed due to over rush as well as minimal use of construction equipment and the materials in road uh, construction that you know that that uh, in our local areas or uh, local cities you can see that a lot of roads are broken down due to ineffective use of funds that's an important thing so we have to assess the capacity how much capacity they can hold how many vehicles can be hold by that road what is the minimum durability of road these all are should be analyzed if there any mistake we should correct that mistake that's the way of assessing capacity and this is very important while discussing a disaster issue and uh, if we are not giving much importance for the assessing of capacity in a disaster management automatically when a disaster affects the effect of disaster or impact of disaster will be much more okay and now we will uh, have to give some uh, method how to assess capacity we have said what is the importance of capacity now we will discuss what or how to assess the capacity even if we know that assessing capacity is important and we need to assess that capacity we must know how to assess that capacity if we are unaware about the method of finding the capacity assessment even we are saying that we have to uh, assess the capacity and we are not having the method means there is no solution even now we have to, we can see the same example of roads we know that roads are not built according to our requirement even though we know that it's very important to assess the capacity of a road we are not having not much methods to find the uh, quality of road the contractor will make the road and the village people village officers or someone will check that road and length width and depth of uh, concrete and then they will go and sanction the funds means the people who are here will not understand what is the condition of road we can see a shiny road on the uh, sides of our house but even though we cannot say how many how much period it will be like that so for that we should have a proper method how to assess that capacity there are many different ways to assess the organizational or system capacity and there are numerous tools and instruments that can be used to diagnose different aspects of organizational and system capacity okay 
we get to take the same example of students you are at uh, your attendance as well as mark how you are learning the subject when we are considering that we have assessed the method when we are teaching you you are getting some knowledge and you are getting some notes you can see that i am providing this notes and i will share the same notes in your uh, linvest as course material and you can learn by reading this one and when you are reading this one you will remain uh, my sir uh, myself ashin have taught us about this subject and explain something regarding with a uh, mixed with some examples and you can write the same in your examination even writing the examination you may have confusion and uh, someone may uh, think this is not enough i forgot everything i forgot how to write that thing and the language is very tough in such a way the people may think the students may think and the papers will be evaluated by the faculty member myself will check the internal papers during that only i can understand what is the condition of it i am assessing your capacity and assessing someone may get 50 out of 50 and someone may get 10 out of 50 so when comparing this one we can understand that we have done a good teaching practice because someone got 50 out of 50 but some people some area having problem there is only 10 out of 50 so in such case we need to identify the people who are not performing well for the examination so we will take some people that may be less than 10 or 5 and we will organize a remedial measures so remedial classes for such people to overcome that problem so the same topic in different way that is we will explain much more into that category will help us to build capacity when doing that remedial measures definitely we can see that there is a change in the pupil who scored less marks that pupil will increase their capacity or strengthen their capacity by different methods so how to assess capacity means there are different tools for assessing your uh, performance that is academic performance we are using the tool known as examination we are also using the term assessment we are also using the term quiz everything is used to assess your academic performance in same way in a disaster management when we are assessing capacity we need to use different tools the same tool cannot be used for earthquake and flood we need to choose the tool according to the type of disaster and location and there is however no single approach which can claim superiority or much less objectivity that's very simple sentence that we cannot say use the particular tool for the disaster that will not be efficient for that disaster sometimes flood is uh assessed by some tool and all other areas are differently so i think you can understand how to assess capacity there are three types mainly that's self assessment avoid approaches which focus only on identifying capacity gaps and look beyond single organization there is first one in self assessment we will self assess what how is me performing how is my plans are working and uh, our capacity development are in that is how we are checking ourselves that's the first method assessment tool and uh, second tool when we are doing this one we can identify capacity gap but it's rarely used even though capacity gap finding is a good practice avoid such things because if we are finding capacity gaps that is Uh, we require this one but we cannot achieve this one we cannot achieve this one there is no solution what we can achieve find the solution for such things gap yeah, finding is not enough for a good practice and 
the last one is look beyond the single organization that is when we are planning a single tool and uh, we are getting a result don't stick on that particular tool you need to use another tool or another method to check the same result sometimes that may be very good compared to the earlier one which tool we have conventionally used so whenever we are using multiple tools or more than one tool we can have good results or good capacity building assessments then only our disaster uh, management can be strengthened okay these are the three important areas you should focus on first one self assessment that is done by ourselves we can use any type of tool by ourselves for the disaster assessment and second one is avoid finding uh, capacity gap alone you can find capacity gaps but that will not give you solutions by doing finding at capacity gaps we can, we will get that uh, there is a capacity gap like this and uh, there are uh, we cannot complete this capacity gap we cannot complete this capacity gap means we are not getting the solution so we need to do what we can do what we have to do that should be focused on this area and next one is look beyond single organization don't think that organization is a company you can even use single organization or multiple organization companies for assessing a disaster but when you are thinking a tool an instrument if we are checking a disaster in a particular manner the result may be getting to us that may be correct or wrong but that's not giving a complete solution you need to check the same disaster with another tool and analyze both results then only we can claim that our disaster capacity is enough and we can assess all the capacity built up by us and we can prevent the disaster and now we will after assessing the capacity we can understand that there is a capacity gap and we can correct it so we need to strengthen that capacity existing capacity is not enough for the protection against disaster is found out by assessing the capacity if we the assessment is correct and we are getting the result mean that's not shopping our work we need to strengthen our capacity in a flood area i will take an example of flood area there are different water passages and we have assessed the capacity and found that these passages are not enough only 3 or 4 passages are there at least 10 passages could overcome this disaster or protect us from the flood then we need to go for that we need to strengthen our capacity and the people who are at that vulnerable community should be trained well the people uh, may be unknown to the languages that is if i am taking class to you in english version or english medium and the people who are listening to me that's you are unavail unavailable or are unaware about that language particular language then this communication is a failure so we need to check or change our method in some areas some uh, very far area or forest area the people may not be having any knowledge of any language in such situation we need to provide powerpoint presentation which shows images and train them using that images you should do like this you should do like this everything should be said to them when we are going with uh, within a plane or in a plane you can understand the same the flight will be dispatched or uh, departure after that the air hostess may train the pupil in a 
in his own way was say i don't know what word uh, they are using their hands they will teach the uh, travelers that you should do like this you should do like this when a accident occurs that's an example good example of communicating or training the people they are not using the language of english they are using sign language you should do like this you should do like this like that they are giving a practical or knock drill to the old people to convince them uh, the how to act in a disaster situation hope you are understanding that's a way strengthening the capacity if my english language is not enough for you then i should come before you with sign language and only you can understand so strengthening is very important and strengthening capacity for disaster risk reduction has been developed against the backdrop of the united nation development program long standing commitment to supporting developing and high risk countries through its programs services for capacity development and disaster risk reduction and the second point very important the objective of this component is to enhance the capab- capabilities of the implementing entities in managing disaster risk enhance preparedness and achieving resilient recovery so you should be very thorough with the strengthening capacity for reducing when we are uh, doing such things when we are strengthening our capacity for reducing the risk you have to focus on two points first one is capacity building for disaster management and the second point is technical support for the uh, risk reduction so first one is capacity building for disaster management that is we are providing uh, all supports or uh, structural supports for the capacity building that include you can see there are uh, inclusion of some stakeholders that is capacity building of the state disaster management authority by strengthening its institutional and organizational structure we can strengthen their institutional and organizational structure for that we are adding staff staffing is added and resources is added training for uh, tra- sorry funding for training is added regular drills are given emergency operation center staff and disaster management officer at various levels are included this is a method of strengthening capacity and also strengthening disaster response force we will give additional equipment instruments everything for the disaster response force that's another method and setting up disaster support system and emergency operation center to integrate and analyze information from multiple sources in an integrated geospatial system these are the basic things that capacity building physical structural increasement or strengthening of capacity for the disaster risk reduction now we will discuss some technical support what are, uh, should be added that is preparation of hydro meteorological resilience action plan focus on uh, for extreme weather events that in such a way in weather conditions are not good we need to give some important areas that is ews exchange web services in such area we need to give more importance in some areas due to weather condition or disaster the telecommunication lines may fail in such situation we need to shift our connection to another service that if we are using geophone or uh, airtel we should be able to transfer that calls to idea that which is available in that local area that some most of the case the bsnl will be the area of getting good results because they are having multiple towers in that local area so we should be able to shift our things and next one is river morphology study for some key impacted by disaster and to analyze identify uh, critical protective infrastructure works needed for the 
the river than strengthening we need to focus on river morphology actually we are having very less time and these points should be read by you on uh, when we are uploading this in a course file or course material very simple terms and uh, when you are reading this one you may uh, confuse because it's very tough language but we cannot avoid these things please listen my video this will help you to understand all these things just remember that in this classroom we have discussed capacity building and capacity building needs why we are assessing capacity building and why how to assess that capacity and even after assessing the capacity we will focus on strengthening part if the capacity is not enough for protection against that disaster then we will go for strengthening for that we have two types that is capacity building and second one is technical support these are the area we should be focused anyway thank you for listening please put your attendance in the command window